Welcome back to the annual meeting of the Asian Development Bank here in uh, Manila. I am with uh, Mr. Mamuka Bakhtaze, the finance minister of uh, Georgia. Minister, Georgia, after a couple of years, a few years of sluggish economic growth, now is recovering uh, pretty, at a pretty steady pace. Uh, economic growth in the, fourth quarter, in the first quarter of 2018 was about 5%. So what, have been the, what are the main drivers of uh, this economic recovery? Uh, thank you. Uh, yes, indeed, 2017 was pretty successful for our economy. Our GDP growth rate was 5%. The first quarter of 2018 is 52 And according to many forecasts, including IMF forecasts, in the next four years, Georgia will become the leader in terms of economic growth in the region. However, I would like also to underline that in 2014-16, uh, the GDP growth rate was uh, lower, but anyway, it was much higher than in our neighborhood. Uh, the reason for this was that the prices on commodities was down, and uh, unfortunately for our neighbors, the price on commodities is a very sensitive uh, topic, and that also affected us. However, uh, we could manage uh, to grow at a higher rate than in our neighborhood. But indeed, 17 was very, very important year for us. It demonstrated that uh, our reforms are very successful. Uh, let me remind that in 2017, we started a very important reform. We abolished the profit tax, the corporate tax, in case the companies reinvest the money in the economy. And we really got very good results. You know, the, the GDP growth rate was 5%. The reinvestment almost doubled, uh, more than doubled actually. It was by, grew by 128%. Uh, it was historical high for us in terms of FDI. Uh, we could manage to decrease our current account deficit from 13% down to 48 So we had some significant uh, improvements uh, from, both, uh, from both on a macroeconomic level and on the international trade level as well. Uh, the export was up by 28% and we are very happy to see that in the first quarter we have the same figures. The export is again very high. Uh, you know that Georgia is becoming more and more popular as a tourist destination. Um, uh, so last year uh, we hosted more than 7 million people and this year we, uh, we, uh, we have uh, an estimation to receive more than 8 million visitors, which is really a, a huge achievement, especially taking into consideration that our population is less than 4 million. So this means that we are in a list of a very few countries in which number of visitors actually is more than the actual number of the local population. One of the challenges, uh, if, we, if we look on the other hand, uh, one of the challenges has, uh, has been and uh, remains uh, the, the stability of the Georgia Lari. Uh, and particularly now in this month, uh, uh, currencies in developing economies like Georgia have been, un have been under pressure. This morning there was this news that the Argentinian Central Bank uh, they hiked interest rates up to 40% uh, to tackle the depreciation of their currency. So what is your, your perspective on uh, the current momentum of the Georgia Lari, which uh, remains uh, has recovered a bit at uh, the beginning of the year, now is depreciating again. So what is your perspective of, over, over the future of the Lari? Uh, of course, we see some turbulence in the region, in our neighborhood. We are closely monitoring it, uh, especially uh, in the countries which are our major uh, trade partners. However, I have to uh, also uh, highlight a very important fact that in comparison with last period, uh, Georgian economy has become much more resilient for, for a couple of reasons. The first is that uh, we have diversified our economy. Uh, we have diversified our export markets. You know that Georgia is the only country now in the region uh, that has simultaneously the free trade regime with both European Union and with China. Uh, with China, the free trade uh, regime has become effective for 1st of January. So this means that actually our export markets are also pretty diversified. Uh, our very important priority is to decrease the level of dollarization in our economy. And last year, actually, we were pretty successful. We could decrease the rate of dollarization by 12%. Okay. So that means that in comparison with, uh, with the national currencies of, of our 
neighbor countries the uh, and in comparison with with the situations that we had three or four years ago the economy is much more resilient and that means that our national currency is much more resilient and if you look at the depreciation rate of lari in comparison with uh, with our with our neighbors we can say that actually lari is uh, the one of the most stable uh, currencies in the region Talking about currencies, but new generation of currencies, cryptocurrencies. Georgia has become uh, almost, almost surprisingly one of the world's uh, hotspots for uh, crypto mining. Um, almost, uh, according to some estimates, uh, second only to, to China in terms of volume of uh, crypto mining uh, happening around the country. So from a policy perspective, is this more of an opportunity or of a challenge? Uh, well, yeah, you are absolutely correct. According to some studies, uh, Georgia is number two or three in the world in terms of uh, crypto mining. Uh, and uh, even uh, even in today's meeting, uh, this was one of the main topic. And uh, this generally, the topic about cryptocurrencies is uh, is uh, it has become very popular. Uh, and uh, of course, I mean, our uh, position is that. Uh, uh, we, that uh, uh, the industry of crypto mining uh, has been growing in the last couple of years. Ten days ago, we had the spring meetings in, uh, in, in Washington, and there's the same spirit actually here in Manila during the uh, ADB annual summit, that uh, uh, there should be some kind of rules of game on international level, okay? Because we see that now more and more countries are trying to implement or craft their own national strategies about uh, cryptocurrencies, and we are closely monitoring that. But however, uh, we think that there should be some rules of games, not only on national, but on international level, because this sector has become actually pretty large. That's a, that's a fact. And I think that the industry needs a new rules of game. Some rules. Okay, Minister, thank you very much for being with us today. Thanks everybody for watching. You can follow all our coverage of the annual meeting on fdiintelligence.com. Stay tuned. Thanks. Thank you.